So you want to buy a home, but you're not sure what type of loan to take out. That's okay. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the many popular loan options there are out there so you can have a better understanding when you eventually go through the process yourself. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Evan, a real estate agent and mortgage broker. Choosing the right loan can be very tricky considering all the options there are out there. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the key things to consider and the main differences between these loan options so you can make an informed decision when the time comes. To start off, you're going to need to know the difference between conventional and unconventional loans. Conventional loans, which are the most popular, account for a majority of the loan applications processed. These are private sector loans, meaning they are not backed by the government. So they are not insured or guaranteed by any government agency. However, the loans must conform to the standards set by government-sponsored enterprises like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. As a side note, Fannie Mae, which is the Federal National Mortgage Association, and Freddie Mac, which is the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, purchases mortgages loans from lenders. This enables these lenders to replenish their supply of funds, allowing them to lend more money. Fannie and Freddie either hold on to these mortgages they purchased in their portfolio, or they package them up into mortgage-backed securities to be sold. Since these loans are not government-backed, they typically require higher credit scores, larger down payments, and PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, if the down payment is below 20%. Unconventional loans account for non-traditional mortgage options. So this can be government-backed loans or alternative financing methods. These loans are typically for individuals with lower to moderate incomes or that need to put little to no down payment down. Another thing you need to know is what fully amortizing means. Basically, you the borrower will make regular consistent payments over the course of the loan. These payments will cover the principal and interest. Over time, the interest component of your payment will decrease and the principal component of your payment will increase. When the loan is finished, the entire principal is paid off. Okay, great. Now we can start getting into the specific loans. So with conventional loans, a very common one is a fixed rate mortgage. So with fixed rate mortgages, these loans maintain the same interest rate for the entire life of the loan and are usually fully amortizing. You can get the loan term for 15, 20, or 30 years. But note, 30 years is typically what people choose when buying a home. The shorter loan periods usually come with lower interest rates, but higher monthly payments. The next thing to consider are adjustable rate mortgages, or ARMS for short. These loans have an interest rate that can change over time. They typically start with a fixed rate for our initial period of time, so somewhere between three and 10 years, and they change based on the performance of an index. These loans feature rate caps that limit how much the interest rate can increase or decrease, preventing it from surpassing a certain point. ARMS allow the borrower to have lower initial monthly payments, but after a fixed period of time, your interest rate can become unpredictable. In most cases, borrowers will refinance their ARM loan before the fixed period is up. Next, we have what are called jumbo loans. Also known as non-conforming loans, these are loans that exceed the Federal Housing Financial Agency, or FHFA's, conventional mortgage financing limits. These loans are usually very large, hence that's why they're called jumbo loans, and are usually meant for higher priced properties. Since these loans are seen to have a higher risk, the underwriting process is more strict, Borrowers usually need higher credit scores, lower debt to income ratios, and more significant cash reserves. They may also need to put down a larger down payment and might have a higher interest rate. For more info on the loan approval process, I have a video on it, so check out my channel. Or you can check out the description down below where I'll be linking it. So moving on, now we're on to unconventional loans and one of the more popular ones is the FHA loan. FHA loans are insured by the FHA or Federal Housing Administration. They allow for lower down payments and lower credit scores, making them more accessible to potential home buyers. If you have a credit score that is 580 or higher, your minimum down payment would be 3.5% of the purchase price of the house. However, any lower would cause your minimum down payment to go up significantly. Something to note, with FHA loans, the borrower will be required to pay mortgage insurance premiums upfront and annually. FHA loans are great options for people that can't afford the traditional 20% down payment, but still really want to buy a home. Next, we have what are called VA loans. The VA loan is specifically designed for eligible veterans, active duty members, and certain surviving spouses. The loan is administered through the Department of Veteran Affairs and individuals must meet a few set requirements in order to become eligible, such as meeting the service length requirement. Some key features of this loan are no down payment, no private mortgage insurance, 
flexible credit score requirements, and competitive interest rates. The VA loan aims to give back to the veterans that have served our country and help them achieve homeownership. Another loan option you have access to is the USDA loan. The USDA loan, which is guaranteed by the US Department of Agriculture. Yeah, you didn't think they had a loan now, did you? Anyway, the loan's purpose is to encourage homeownership in rural and suburban areas for individuals with low to moderate incomes. The loan offers no down payment, no private mortgage insurance, and flexible credit score requirements. However, the loan has income limits and is only allowed in eligible geographic locations. There are plenty of other loan options out there to consider, but the ones that I spoke about today are the most popular ones with home buyers. If there are specific loans you want me to talk about in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And with that, thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.